Good evening and welcome to Philosophy Roulette number 78 it looks like where we grab a random philosophy paper off the internet and read it. Okay so we we're looking at Thought Journal just because of the length. Let's see what was this? This was from the morning. The morning. Faith, fictionalism, and bullshit. I read that one. That was fun. Uh, let's see anything else right here that looks like it's cool right off the bat. Frig. Intentional consistency. See if it's all here. Oh, uh, PDF Wiley. Let's see. Maybe it's a open access or something. Here we go. Cool. That made it easy. An alternative norm of intentional consistency. By Carlos Nunez. If you join me live, you can grab the uh, link by just typing exclamation point paper in the chat box. You can also suggest that I read something if you uh, want me to read something. That would be fine. So, let's see, what do we got? Let me check. It feels like I'm not quite got the uh, things working right now. No, I guess we're okay. So, that's fine then. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Download, thank you. Cool. So. Alternative norm of intentional consistency. Skepticism about a norm of intentional consistency. A lot of people talk about norms. There's been a theme recently. Maybe it's just a thought likes norms or the editors do. Alright, so here we go. Many theorists of action believe that rational rationality requires of you that you do not intend each of two ends you believe to be inconsistent. In the sense that were one of them to obtain, then because of the other one, because of that, the other one wouldn't. Let me call this norm end consistency. According to it, end consistency. Rationality requires of an agent A that if A intends at time T that end E, and if A believes at at t that were it to be that the case at n e star then because of not e that so e star that n e because of not e then a does not intend at t that e star so e star is the opposite sort of intention some philosophers have resisted this idea to do so they point to cases where it seems like two like an agent would argument her chances of getting what she wants by intending each of two acknowledge it acknowledgedly inconsistent ends. Consider a case I take and adapt from Michael Bratman. Video game. You are playing a video game in which you have to hit either one of two targets or one. We call them target one, target two, T1, T2. You have two guns and are ambidextrous enough to be able to aim and shoot at both. You know that your chance of hitting either target would be greater if you shot at both than if you shot at only one. You also know that the cost of shooting at both are the same as the cost of shooting at only one. However, you know that were you to hit either one, then because the game would end and you would not hit the other. So you're basically, two things are inconsistent, but one would block the other from obtaining, and but you can intend to do either. Some people think that in this situation, it isn't irrational for you to intend to hit T1 and intend to hit T2, despite your belief that these ends are inconsistent. This has led them to think that either rationality does not require believed consistency between an agent's intentions, or if it does, rationality is not normative. Well, I mean, it seems like you're norming the or the disjunction, but not either of the particular disjuncts in that in that case, which is uh depends on how you uh, slice up the logic with intentionality. Uh, the reason they have to think this are various. One reason is that intuitively, it need not be irrational for you to try to hit T1 and try to hit T2, but in trying to phi, they are you necessarily implies intending to phi. So it needn't be irrational for you to try to hit T1 and try to hit T2. It needn't be irrational for you to hit T1 and in intend to hit T2. Another reason they present this, yeah, well, 
Yeah, that's fine. Another reason they present is that intuitively it need not be irrational for you to adapt, adopt the goal of hitting T1 and also adopt the goal of hitting D2. But having the goal of phi, they argue, is just is intending to phi. What it what it is to intend to phi, they would say, is simply to have phiing as a settled object of pursuit. So if it so if it needn't be irrational for you to settle upon the goal of hitting T1 and also settle on the goal of hitting T2, it needn't be irrational for you to intend to hit T1 and to intend to hit T2. One further reason could be that intuitively, if you end up hitting T1, this is something you would have done intentionally, and moreover, rationally so. The same would go for T2. But intentionally phying, some argue, implies intending to phi. If one thinks this, then one may also think that if it is rational for one to intentionally phi, then it must be rational for one to intend to phi. So if in hitting T1 or hitting T2, T2 in both cases, something that you would have done intentionally and rationally so, if you do it at all, it must be that you rationally intend to hit T1 and rationally in intended to hit T2. Perhaps these arguments can be resisted, but I shall try not to explore this issue here. Instead, I will formulate a norm of intention consistency that could be accepted by those who are convinced by such arguments and so who, who think that in the cases like these, it need not be irrational to intend each of two acknowledgedly inconsistent ends. You know, I'm a little concerned with this use of inconsistent. It's like incompatible maybe, because um, it's not like hitting T2 is somehow like logically contradictory to hitting T1. In some sense, it is in the course of the game where you are shooting things. It is impossible that you were to do both. But it's not a contradiction um, in terms of logic. It's not like you're saying it's true and false. Um, so it is some sort of contrary here, but it's not a... Uh, the, you could slice up inconsistency differently, too. So... Um, that's a different issue, but it's something I would be concerned about uh, in the co over the course of this paper. Um, what exactly is the inconsistency here? Because like the it's like the video game won't allow you to hit both, but the, it's like the video game is in charge of the inconsistency then. But that's not a logical inconsistency. That's a video game inconsistency. I should mention that my brother beat an impossible video game once. I don't know how he did it in Chinatown in New York. There used to be a, an arcade that would have these chickens, and one of the games was tic-tac-toe, and you would play against the chicken in tic-tac-toe, and you know, if you can go first in tic-tac-toe, you can always at least win or draw. Always. It's sort of a deterministic game. So my brother is playing the chicken in tic-tac-toe. Like, there's a live chicken there as a thinking booth and a button, and it's just basically, there's one button. It's not like it's actually selecting the pieces, but it would get a piece of food every time it hits a button. So it's basically, you put a quarter and the chicken gets a, a treat. Um, and every time it hits a button, it, the computer would select an X or, or an O to put in the box. My brother somehow, the lucky person that he is, he wins. Like, it shows that he has actually beaten a computer at tic-tac-toe and gone second. It's amazing. So we called the manager over saying we didn't get our prize of a bag of fortune cookies like the thing says you get if you actually beat the chicken. You're supposed to get a bag of fortune cookies. And the manager just looks at us and like, there is no fortune cookies. Like, there never was. Like, it, so it's like, but was that, a, was that a logical inconsistency? No, it was the video game is uh, not made up to spec, because how many places have chickens where you can play video games against them anymore? But anyway. <sighs> okay, more precisely, what I will do is revise the norms of consistency for intentions in ways that mimic revisions that have been made to the norm of means and its coherence. I turn to this issue now. All right, so we'll see what they have norms of consistency for intentions. Lessons from means and coherence. Philosophers of action who think that rationality requires some kind of coherence between your intentions, friends, and your intentions for means have generally come to accept that the means that should figure in a requirement of means and coherence are not those which you believe to be necessary for your ends, but those the intending of which you believe to be necessary for your ends. To see this, consider John Broom's version of this requirement, which he calls instrumental requirement. Instrumental requirement. Rationality requires of A that if A intends that T at E and if A believes T at T that if M were not so, because of that E would not be so, if A believes that T believes at T that if she herself were not then to intend M because of 
because of that m would not be so, then a intends at t that m. Okay, so is a so one or the other of e and m, I guess. Uh, in Broom's terminology, a means m is implied. Uh, a means where's a? I don't know. By implied by an and e, if and only if were m not so, then because that e would not be so. So likewise, b yeah. So if sorry, I said it wrong before, but this is right. Likewise, a means m is up to you if and only if were you not to intend m then because of that m would not be so so the means that room's instrumental requirement concerns are only those you believe to be both implied by your end and up to you in other words only those the intending of which you believe to be implied by your end this restriction this restriction on the kind of means that figure in the requirement follow follows intuition about cases where it seems like you need not be not be irrational even though you do not intend the means you believe to be implied by your end because you do not believe you need to intend to take the means in order to take them. Broom presents the following example. Suppose you intend to fly to Venice tomorrow and believe your waking at 6 is a means implied by this end, but you know that you are woken at 6 every morning by the braying of your neighbor's donkey. Then you do not need to intend to wake at 6 because you believe that will happen anyway. Okay. As Broom notes, waking up at 6 is not something you do. It is something that happens to you. So you could think that if we restricted the means M in the requirement above to your actions, we could get rid of condition 3. But Broom following Francis Com presents a case that shows this isn't so. You are a doctor and you intend to relieve the pain of one of your patients by giving her morphine. You believe that in order to relieve her pain, you will have to give her so much morphine that you will kill her as a side effect. <laughs> side effect. You do not and need not intend to kill her. You also intend to admit a new patient to your hospital. Since there are no spare beds and you cannot more move living patients out of the hospital, you believe you can admit a new patient only by killing an existing one. So you believe that killing a patient is a means implied by the end of admitting a new patient which you intend. But that is all right because you believe you will kill a patient anyway, a side effect of your other intention to relieve pain. You do not and need not intend to kill a patient. So the person is going to die just because, but like that's okay because I intended something else even though I know that the intention of, that the result of death is a consequence. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, funny. Killing a patient unlike waking up is something you do. Still, you may be rational despite intending to do this because you do not believe you need to intend to do it in order to do it. I, I think the overwhelming consensus is that there need not be any rationality in cases like these, at least I know of no one who denies this. This has led theorists who think that rationality demands a form of means and coherence to reformulate the relevant requirement so that it concerns specifically those means, the intending of which you believe to be implied by your end. Importantly, it hasn't led anyone to think that rational rationality does not require means and coherence, or that if it does, rationality is not norm normative. The main idea then seems to be the following. It need not be incoherent for you to intend E and not intend M when you believe that M is implied by E because although this belief relates E to M, it does not relate E to your intending M. That That is, your belief leaves it open what the relation between E and your intending M is. Since it leaves this open, it could still be the case according to your beliefs that E even though you do not intend M. So this belief puts no structure structural pressure on you to intend M despite your intention that E. My point is now my point now will be simply that we could apply the same lesson to a requirement of intentional consistency. I turn to this issue now. So I guess this is sort of like the uh, entailment relation in this intention is not um so obvious. So you can intend to do thing one thing with some other thing as a consequence, but not intent to, and not the entailment, uh, the intention does not hold across entailment. So, I think that's a fair, uh, thing to say. At least we don't think it does. Um, it, it might well, or, you know, you can, I think it's like, uh, maybe the difference between manslaughter and murder. Did you intend to kill someone, or were you negligent? in a bad way where you could have maybe realized what you were up to um but then someone uh, if someone died because of it you're guilty of manslaughter not murder i don't know the exact uh, legal uh distinction here um i'm not really worried about killing anybody because it's not what i do but um 
Yeah, but uh, uh, it, this seems like a uh, something that people actually do make this distinction that you do not have to have, even if it's a clear a consequence of something that you are intending, you do not have to intend that because uh, intention doesn't hold over entailment, it looks like. Or at least we don't think it does. We don't force people to say it does. Okay, as far as I know, all cases that have been presented as intuition pumps against a norm of intentional intention consistency are ones where, by pursuing each of two acknowledgedly inconsistent ends, an agent can augment her chances of getting what she ultimately wants. One important feature of such cases is that in them you do not believe either one of the ends in question that were you to intend it, that then that end would come about. Because you do not believe this, you do you need to you need not believe that were you to intend one of the ends, then because of that the other end would not obtain. There are a lot of negations in this writing. It's a little hard to read. Like not believe and then not believe here and then you believe there. Uh, dearie. For instance, in Bratman's original case, you do not believe that were you to intend to hit T1, you would hit it. You are not so confident of your own shooting abilities. The same goes for T2. This allows you to pursue both goals without ever coming to believe that you are doing something or even holding an attitude that will secure the frustration of your own pursuits. You can shoot at both targets and simply let the world decide, as Bratman puts it, which, which one, if any, you end up hitting. This is a crucial feature of these cases. It is crucial that, in them, you can, by your own lights, pursue both ends in parallel without, so to say, stepping on your own toes, because at no point you believe of anything you are doing or of any attitude you hold that it will secure the frustration of your goal, your own goals. This is precisely what allows theorists who appeal to such cases to claim that there is nothing going awry in these situations. Okay, that's fair that you're saying, look, it's really the uh, world that's... Um, you're doing multiple things that are incom incompatible, but you they're not actually incompatible because it'll be up to someone else. You're, you know, you're taking the wide stance that any one of these things is okay, but it's not incompatible because you're actually leaving it up to some external system, the world, as it were, or, or something else that will make the ultimate final choice. You're just presenting the range of possibilities to boost your chances of having a favorable outcome. And so it's not inconsistent because the final, final outcome is up to some deterministic, uh, uniquely deciding factor. Maybe not deterministic, but it's up to some uniquely deciding factor. It just happens to be outside your control, but that doesn't matter. Because uh, you intend any one of them, um, and you're not intending inconsistent ones because you know that they will be uniquely selected eventually by some uh, select uniquely selection process, uniquely selecting pro process. Okay, for you to suppose instead that besides believing that were you to hit T1, you would not hit T2, you also believe that were you to intend to hit T1, you would hit it. Perhaps you believe T1 is a pretty easy target, since you are confident that were you to intend to hit it, you would shoot at it, and that were you to shoot at it, you would hit it, and you believe you would hit it if you intended to do so. Because of this, you also believe we can assume that you would be would not hit T2 if you were you to intend to hit T1. In this scenario, it seems plausible that it would be irrational for you to intend to hit T1 and then intend to hit T2. In deciding to hit T1 by forming the intention to hit it, you would thereby be deciding not to do something you intend to do, namely to hit T2. You would be, by your own lights, sabotaging your own pursuits. Yeah, so if you, this is moving the select, the unique selection process back to you, in which case you have a problem of, um, if you intend to do incompatible things. Just as before, with respect to the norm of means and coherence, then it seems that what allows theorists to think that there need not be anything incoherent in these cases is that although you your belief relates E to E star, it does not relate E to intending E star. Your belief in leaves it open that what the relation here is. Since it leaves it open, it could still be the case according to your beliefs that E, even though you intend E star. This is what allows such theorists to think that your beliefs put no structural pressure on you to not intend E star despite your intention that E. If this is so, then there is an easy fix to the norm of intention consistency that would avoid such putative counterexamples. Let me call this the requirement of end intention consistency, EIC, to contrast with the norm I called end consistency before. 
according to it, and intention consistency, rationality requires of A that if A intends at T that E, and if A believes that at T that were she herself then to intend that E sure, then because of that not E, then A d does not intend at T that E star. People who accept EC will most likely accept EIC. In any case, I see no motivation whatsoever to accept the former but reject the latter. Yeah. However, people who accept EIC need not accept EC. Anyone who is convinced that there is nothing rationally problematic in Bratman's case when you both intend to hit T1 and intend to hit T2 will reject EC, but they need not reject EIC. Excuse me. Moreover, as far as I know, no one has presented a case where there is any intuitive pr pressure to reject EIC. So even people who have explicitly rejected a norm like EC could accept a norm like EIC. Okay, so let me think about this for a sec. Alright, let me finish the paragraph and then I'll, the section, and then I'll think, or try to think. In fact, whereas I see no reason whatsoever to reject EIC when you accept EC, I do think there is a genuine re reason to accept EIC, even if you reject EC. The reason is that if you only believe that E and E star are inconsistent, but you do not believe that E and intending E star are inconsistent, then according to your beliefs, it could be the case that both E and your, and it could be both that E and that you intend E star. Because of this, one could think that there isn't in this situation structural pressure not to intend E star. One could think that you need the belief that E and intending E star are inconsistent to trigger such pressure. Uh, okay, so let's see, so we've got this one, uh, let me go look at EC again real quick. This is, this is IR, not EC. Okay, so, alright, so the difference here is if we look at this, A intends at time T that and E, and if A believes that T were it to be the case that and E star, then because of that not E, then A does not intend T at T E star. And we've got the difference down here is, yeah, this is the uh, like subjunctive were she herself to intend that E star, then because of that not E. So you were adding a subjunct of the were in there. See, if she herself were, no, no, this is the same, no, this is the instrumentality, excuse me or to be the case. And so they're adding subjunctive intention up here. Like were she to intend that E star. Okay, so you're trying to separate out the specificity of the intention is what it looks like. You can intend to hit either one, but if you specifically intend to hit, hit, hit a specific one, then you can't hit both if they're inconsistent. So this is making a specificity uh, requirement on your intentions to begin with that doesn't actually hold. Um, um, so this allows you to have a sufficient end uh, across your intention as long as your intention itself is not too specific. So, okay, that's reasonable. If you can generalize your intentions, then you can have multiple instances, of different tokens that side of that satisfies the type of intention that you have. So I can uh, be down with that. That seems reasonable. Um, like you, you want to hit a target and then which target it specifically is doesn't make so much of a difference. Okay. So it's a good distinction, I guess. The uh, intention doesn't have to be so specific as to the end itself. I put, all right, concluding remarks. I put forth a norm of intention consistency that is immune to the kind of cases that have been presented in the literature to reject the idea that rational requires believed consistency between an agent's intentions, or that if it does, it is not normative. I call this norm EIC to contrast it with the more familiar, familiar EC. I have not tried to argue that we should accept EIC, nor have I argued that we should reject EC and accept EIC instead. For all I've said, here, both one or neither of these norms could be genuinely norms of rationality. My only point here is that people who are convinced by the types, the type of cases that have been presented so far to argue that EC is not a genuine requirement of rationality could still accept a requirement of EIC. Now, some theorists who reject EC do not reject it simply because of such 
kind of cases. They reject it for the deeper reason that they deny that rationality requires any form of structural coherence as such, or because they think that if it does, then rationality is not normative. They think that all rationality or normativity requires is responding correctly to the reasons you have or to the reasons that are somehow made available by your evidence. Following Bratman 09, let me call them myth theorists about coherence requirement of rationality. It is interesting to note then that since no case has been presented where there is any intuitive pull to the idea that you have that you would have most reason to be in it, you would have most reason to be an end intention inconsistent, even even myth theorists who deny that rationality requirements of any kind of formal coherence and who deny moreover that necessarily if you are rational you are end in you are inconsistent could still accept that necessarily if you are rational you are end in intention inconsistent end intention consistent uh breakups like you've got a whole paragraph here author as a, a one sentence as a paragraph it's like this is, this is a short enough essay you could have uh, added a hear it in like a few extra words <laughs> okay but that's fine it makes enough sense be, be this as it may the fact that no case has been put forth that would present any intuitive challenge to eic is a good reason to give it serious consideration in our theory of practical rationality okay so this is a nice essay um the fact that you can intend a you have like sort of a general intention to hit something and it doesn't specifically have to be the exact end um that's a, a reasonable way to go in this uh, sort of discussion. Uh, there is a question of the entailment of intention and exactly what, how, what your end is, uh, what your what the end you are entailing actually consists in. So can you have a sort of a general generic intention that can be fulfilled by any specific of a group of ends? And if so, like, then you might need a theory of generic intentions. Um, maybe you don't want to do that. You could do that. The question is, is that the way intentions actually are? So we'd have to have some sort of discussion of it. Like the, the, as the author said at the end, they didn't argue for the, the, uh, the reality of this. They're arguing that if you actually believe you hold certain um, principles to begin with, then EIC is better than EC. Which is good. That was a like smart thing to say. Which is they didn't argue for that one should hold this. They argued that if you had certain beliefs, then this is a better principle than the previous one. But it does sort of open you up to um, a more complex understanding of what the uh, phenomena at hand is. Okay, so I guess that might be it for now. It's about a half hour of this. So. That'll be it. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, hope everyone has a good night. Stay safe. And uh, I'd love to hear some feedback from some people if you got. Because I know they are. these videos are getting watched. So have a good night. Bye-bye.